Ciao football lovers of the world, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to you guys that decided to visit the channel for the very first time. To you that decided to open that specific video where we will speak about a new ambitious project that was presented already two years ago and came back suddenly out of nowhere today. Welcome back to you the loyal ones that are watching multiple videos a month, a week and sometimes even a day from this channel. Welcome to all of you, but also welcome to... The Super League. Super League that changed name. I don't know if you notice it, but we don't mention Super League anymore. We are speaking about European Football League. Welcome. Welcome. And to put it into context, we have to go back in two years ago, where the Super League was born, at least online, on a site, in the middle of the night, with a lot of questions from fans, but a little few answers. There were some explanations. You had to find them. You had to dig. You had to understand the meaning. The intentions were good, saving the future of European football as a whole. Unfortunately, the project was not understood by the mass. With all what happened in the following days of that online announcement of the Super League, with UEFA stepping on the foreground, ground, publicly speaking against it, involving political parties like Boris Johnson, with the fans protesting on the streets with some clubs, a majority of the clubs that verbally were away of the project, Super League took a step back. They never gave up on the project, but they took a step back to review it, to listen to the fears of the fans, to show them that some of their fears were already answered, but may be difficult to find, but also taking into consideration new questions that raised up. Maybe understanding that some things could have ex been explained and we worked in a different way today they came out with 10 principles answering the majority of the questions being aware that a lot of things has to be still done if that project will see the light one day because i'm saying if because we know it the court of justice of the european union will have to rule out if yes or no it is possible yes or no the legality and compatibility of the UEFA monopoly is there, yes or no. Depending on that answers that will happen in a few months, well, the Super League that is now called the European Football League can see the light. So I will try to explain you the 10 different principles, but not only that, because you were certainly able to read them online. I will also try to give you also the origin and the consequences if we are not doing something. And maybe the most exciting part, I will try to show you a possible visual identity of how that tournament could look like possibly again. So let's start to speak about the origin of the problem because today we have to admit it. We like it or we don't like it. Whatever league we are representing, whatever club we are loving, European football is under threat. Huge imbalances are there between the different leagues. Clubs, historical ones, but also smaller ones, they are not longer able to compete anymore. A lot of owners, a lot of clubs, they take risk, but they are scared to take risk. There are some blocks because they are in the question. They don't know if these risks that has been taken will have some return on investment because these risks that has been taken because of non-certainties on long-term qualification to big competition like the European competition, Champions League, Europa League or whatever, well, they can be under risk and their financial foundation can crumble, can collapse. We have to say something immediately. Let's address it. Today, Premier League is not the one to blame. Nobody is putting the finger against Premier League. Nobody wants to mess with what Premier League achieved. Premier League is doing fantastic at the moment and they totally deserve it. They totally deserve the success that they have and they have to continue to invest and to make their product even better, even if it's at the moment the best one on the market by far. The intention is to have the dream to be able to compete and not making the gap even bigger because today except of one league that is the Premier League all the other league they are poor and they are becoming more and more and more poor becoming more poor means that they are weaker why because they have less entries because they are selling their best players to a more attractive and correctly more attractive Premier League the other clubs the other leagues are becoming farmer leagues, we are creating even more a dominance of Premier League, which is good for the Premier League fans, of course, but it's also with consequences, because in five years from now, the most loved competition on earth that is the 
Champions League will no longer exist as we know it. Why? Because If today you are excited to see Liverpool playing versus Barcelona, Real Madrid playing versus Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain playing versus Inter Milan, well, in the future, these clubs will represent nothing anymore. They will be clubs from farmer leagues, but on top of that, they will have become farmer clubs. And this is a problem because if today we have already a ratio from one to four between Premier League and Serie A because of Serie A, not because of Premier League, but in the future it will become even bigger. I tell you, if today Premier League is receiving 1,000, Serie A is receiving 250. There is already a huge imbalance there. It will become even bigger because in five years from now, eight years from now, it will become 2,000, but not to 500, 200, so less to the other leagues, bigger to the Premier League. What is the consequence to that? The European League will have no relevance anymore because the biggest team will be in Premier League and we are going towards a NBA all-star event in Premier League and not anymore a beautiful Champions League as we knew it until today. I hope this is not difficult to understand the dangers of it because more you go with the time, more your product is better, more you have better players, more you have a better product, more you have have a better marketing project, more you have entries. And the other leagues, well, it makes no sense to invest. Look at Eredivisie, the Dutch league. Not everywhere in the world you have the right to see Eredivisie. If you are interested today in Eredivisie, it's really difficult. Sometimes you have to go to piracy to watch the games of uh, Ajax in their league if you are living in Belgium or in other countries. It is a real problem. And maybe one day La Liga will become like that, that none of the broadcasters, they want to invest in La Liga anymore, in Serie A, because they prefer to go only on one big format, that is the Premier League. So it's not blaming Premier League, it's explaining you the consequences. Now, that being said, what are the 10 principles trying to go faster on that? It is a long video. A small recap is... Multi-division competition, 60 to 80 teams, no permanent members anymore, and a minimum 14 games per club per season. Fantastic, it looks like, but how did they work it out? Well, the first one is a broad based and meritocratic competition. What does that mean? Meritocracy, the people were scared because they were correctly saying there is no meritocracy if 15 teams are allowed to stay there forever and ever. Well, they are saying that it's an open multidivisional competition with 60 to 80 teams. They already spoke to 50 different teams that agree with the project. They understand in the project because they want a sustainable distribution of revenues across the Pyramid. Participation should not be granted, but should be based on an annual sporting merit. No permanent members. On that one, with the first explanation, with the first principle, they are tackling immediately all the fears from all of us about a non really fair play sport event. The second one is a really important one because also there a lot of people were doubting hey, what about the domestic competitions? Well, participating paying clubs, they should remain fully committed to domestic tournaments. It is important. But the beautiful thing is that critical needs to strengthen and make a more competitive domestic tournament across the cont continent must be addressed. They are explaining that today, with that small sentence or long sentence, they are explaining that they understand that there is an imbalance between the leagues and they need to work on the domestic leagues. A European competition should play a pivotal role in helping to achieve this goal by generating and allocated additional resources throughout the system. The teams, they remain in their league, so you will always have your Premier League, your Serie A, your La Liga, your Bundesliga, your Eredivisie or Ligue 1, whatever, they're still existing as they are today. If changes will happen, it is because the league owners will decide it, but absolutely not the European football competition. The European competition, because of more revenues, they will invest more in domestic leagues, more money, more entry shared with the pyramid. The third one is improve competitivity with stable and sustainable resources. Going really fast on that, clubs also need a greater stability and predictability. When you will see the format that I will show you about how it can look like, clubs will have the certainty 
or more certainties than today to participate for longer terms in these competitions, which give them and allow them to invest in more structures, infrastructures. An Atalanta could potentially say, yes, I am sure that I can participate in that competition for two, three years now. Well, let's try to put some money to buy and to, to, to build our own stadium. Could be. And also because you have more games, but more top games, a minimum guarantee of 14 games per club. Fourth, Players held, they are explaining here that players, they should not be obliged to participate to new events, to expanded events, to new events like the FIFA World Cup for a club, for example. Again, a new tournament where players are already complaining. They are also saying in that fourth principle that they want to speak with representatives of the players because health is important, is a priority. Fifth rule is that the club run competition with transparent, well-enforced and financial sustainable rules. Well, governed by the clubs and not by third parties that are not taking any risk, that are not investing anything in it, but they are taking all the benefits. The clubs will rule these competitions. Spending should be based only on resources generated. They are speaking about maybe some salary cap but also some transfer cap, which would make in balance all the clubs, which is much better. Of course, you have more entries, you can spend more. The small clubs will have some support because they are saying it here. Also, there will be some appropriate provision for smaller clubs and transitional rules. So smaller clubs will be helped a bit more. Other big clubs will try to be leveled in terms of spending power. Attention, you will not have anymore a team that is coming with new owners that are injecting own money to go on the market. No, it has to be generated by sporting revenue. And this is what a lot of fans were asking for. We want fair competition. We don't want these kind of things that we see now with a new competition that is taking all the money. No, we want for fair sportsmanship. You earn more thanks to sporting result. You generate more revenues. You have the right to spend more. And this is something that is fair. And this is speaking about sport. The sixth one is the world best com football competition. Because, of course, today, you if you are playing versus 14 different teams, well, you will play versus top, top, top teams. You will not have to pray to be maybe in the semi-final before seeing an exciting football game between two big clubs. You will have only big clubs, teams, playing versus each other in big competition. Improved fan experience, they want to involve also the fans for their opinion with a committee of fans that are representing the fans. Improved fan experience is not only that, but it's also having actually the understanding that in their own countries, the stadium needs to go on a higher level. Thanks to the entries and thanks to the support that we will speak about in a, sec in a second phase, well, the leagues will be supported more so that they can invest in their infrastructure infrastructure even more because we need also in the domestic leagues to give the high quality that fans are asking for developing women football super important developing women football and try to put it at the level of men will it be difficult yes it's a beautiful but it's a beautiful challenge we saw what juventus for example was able to do with their women team we saw the attendance of barcelona real madrid with women team that is fantastic with media like marca that is putting them on their first page of the paper simply fantastic what they are doing well women football needs more respect the ninth point is something that i really love and we are going towards the end guys well it's solidarity significant increase and in solidarity grassroots solidarity is essential pillar for european football they are speaking also about here about clubs that are not participating to the club because they didn't qualify for example well as previously announced a minimum of 400 million per year is going direction the non-participating clubs. This is twice as much as what the European UEFA institution is allowing today to the non-participating clubs. Transparency. 
should be ensured via the supervision of an independent authority with clear annual reporting on spending and its impact. They really believe in sharing money with other clubs so that they can reinvest it in sporting infrastructure. And finishing with the 10th principle that is speaking about respecting the European law makes totally sense, but it's good to mention it. Now, we were waiting for so long. How can that European Football League look like? If we take into consideration every information that we have until now, we are speaking about multi-division competition between 60 and 80 teams. We are speaking about no permanent members. We are speaking about minimum 14 games per club. Per season, that's an important one. Well, it could potentially look like this image here, where you have four different divisions. First division split in two, and second division split in two, with each time 15 teams participating. Of course, to determine who will be in division 1A and 1B, you will have a beautiful draw deciding who go in group A, who goes in group B. And then you have the lower teams, lower, I don't know how they will determine it, maybe about history, about the last 10 years result on a European competition, whatever. These teams, from the moment that they are there, you will also have a draw, who's going on A, who's going on B. These teams will play 14 games. There are no a home and away game. There is only one game. You play seven games in your stadium. You are playing seven games away. Every single team. Of course, if you win a game, you have three points. If you draw, you have one point. If you lose, as today, you have zero points. You go in the first division. 15 teams. The four teams with the most points, they will go into the knockout stages. Like the Champions League today. It looks like a bit a Nations League. Same for Division 1B. The four best teams are going to the knockout stages. You play a tournament there with quarterfinal, semifinal and a final. And you have the big winner. What is happening to the relegation system? Because that's a big one. Well, from that first division, the eight last teams, so the four from Group A, the four from Group B, they are playing one game against each other. It can be home and away potentially to increase even more the games there, to have more attractivity, to make a bit of suspense. Well, the winner stays in the league, the loser he goes in second division. Why is it important? Because teams that are in that first division, they have a certainty to participate next year in that competition. People that are remaining there, they know that they will be there for the next two seasons. So you have already a beautiful future towards you. You can start to invest because you are sure that you will be there. Not like Liverpool that is probably not participating to Champions League next year or Chelsea with all the investment not participating to Champions League. Maybe it will be Newcastle. Maybe it will be Manchester United. We don't know who will participate. Same for Juventus. We don't know if Juventus will participate but even Milan is risking with that kind of competition you can already start planning ahead. What about the other ones? Well, the same system is happening in Division 2, A and B group, with 15 and 15 teams that are playing. Again, 14 games, 7 in your home, 7 away. Most points, first one in Division 2 and first one in Division uh, uh, A, and first one in Division 2, they are immediately promoted. What about the other ones from the second to the fifth spot in Group A and from the second to the fifth spot in Group B, they are playing the same knockout stages with the two winners that are promoted to the next state, to the next division, Division 1, for the next season. What about the relegation teams? Well, four last one of Division uh, 2, A, and four last one from Division 2, B, they will be relegated and be out of that competition, freeing up eight spots for new teams that were not participating. So every year you have eight new spots. If you are looking, that means that 50, 52 teams are remaining and have some certainties. 52 teams that are participating to these big games. That's immense. This is big. This is huge. This is more attractive and will generate more money than what UEFA is presenting today. You have certainties, you have attractivity, and you also have an open league. How will these eight teams be determined? Well, I don't know, guys. It can be a tournament between teams that are not participating yet, but that ranked really high in their own league. For example, Fiorentina is the first one in Serie A that arrived in the ranking that is not participating yet 
to the, the uh, European Football League, well, they can play a tournament with the first one of uh, Romania that is not participating, that is playing versus the first one of Croatia that is not participating. Eight teams for there, they qualify for the next season. Then it's up to him or to this team to go and fight, to go into that first division and to remain there. Guys, this is a bit how I imagine it. Of course, there are some flaws. I don't promise that it will look like this, but at least I try to visually have an attractive, beautiful project. Your opinion, guys, I know it's a long video. I know it's long. I know whatever you want to, but I'm curious about reading your opinion. With all the respect, that would be really nice. Grazie, forza, hey, football.